What's up, Brian Bell 360 subscribers? Uh, like and subscribe if you haven't already. Today, I'm gonna show you how to put an air conditioning clutch on an O2 Ford Power Stroke. This clutch is used on a wide variety uh, FX15 AC compressor on Fords and some Toyotas. Uh, big difference on the Ford is you've got more ribs on the pulley. Sorry I haven't put out any new footage or anything in a while. 2021 has been a crazy year for me. I've driven cross country six times. I moved from the West Coast back to the East Coast. But I'm back here at home, my family business, uh, back to my shop, my old tools. A lot of these videos before I was only doing in my garage and driveway out in California. Now I got a full shop here um, back in New Jersey. It's been hot, it's been humid. I needed to get my AC fixed because it's been driving me bananas. I did do a recharge on it. Uh, it was working great and then all of a sudden last week it stopped working. So checking in, got power to the coil for the AC and then it stopped working. So, hey, gonna walk you through the diagnosis. Maybe this is your issue, uh, maybe not. If you're fully charged and your clutch isn't kicking in, this might be your solution. Uh, it's $100 in parts from Napa, where I got it this time, and hope you like, hope this works for you, hope this helps you. Feel free to leave comments, suggestions, again, like and subscribe, appreciate you. Okay, to do this project today, I used 8mm deep socket, 3 8 extension, I had a flathead screwdriver and a little pry bar. I had an electric ratchet. If you got a regular ratchet, that works just fine. Um, I had a torque wrench. The new bolt for the center of the clutch was 10 millimeters, so I had to get a 10 millimeter socket. And I had to go to 155 inch pounds, which is about 13 foot pounds. I had right angle snap pliers, snap ring pliers, plastic mallet, ball peen hammer, Drift. This is to put a brass drift to put a bronze uh, to put the new field coil in. Important feeler gauges, uh, 15 to 30 thousandths. And I had a half inch breaker bar to get the belt off of the engine. That's what I used, should work for you. Also had a test light to test power to the plug before I did the clutch. And ground. So the first thing I'm going to check is if I have power to the AC coil here. So I'm going to take this plug off. Hopefully it comes off easy. Come on. There we go. I'm going to swing that behind the dipstick and then I'm going to start the truck up and turn the AC on. So now that I've got my air conditioning on inside the truck, I'm going to hook up my test light. I go to my AC plug and I check that I've got power to the plug. So I've got power there. Now another thing I like to do is also just in case check the ground so I push my test light over to the positive lead on the battery and then I check the other wire in there to make sure that works as well. So I've got ground as well. So that means I've got power to my plug to the AC coil, but it's still not kicking in the compressor when this is plugged in. Um, that tells me the magnetic coil inside is bad. Um, I also checked my pressures for the gauge. You can use one of the recharge kits or a set of AC gauges on your high and low side. Everything was within range for this should kick on. That's why I have power to this. But the clutch isn't kicking in because that magnetic coil is bad on the back side of the AC I decided to go with a clutch from Napa. Uh, they had one soon, AutoZone got confused, so they didn't get my business. And so now I'm gonna remove the coolant reservoir bottle that consists of three bolts, that one there, and then two down below, uh, eight millimeter socket and six to eight inch extension. Should take care of that.
top bolt is shorter than the lower ones, they, so keep that in mind when you reassemble. Drop those screws down there. Now I'm gonna swing the bottle out of the way here. Get some access to that clutch up top. So that helps me get a little better access there. Uh, next step. Get your half inch breaker bar. Got to take the belt off. So you've got your belt tensioner down below the AC compressor. You can kind of see that right there. belt off the compressor now I'm ready to get at that clutch bolt um, short story some of these do have shims I did pull a shim out a while ago and now it's still not working and not gripping I'll show you where that shim goes when I get the new one I took that center bolt out like I said you're lucky with rust free this clutch comes out fairly easy. There we go. And you can see that's just spanked inside of there. A lot of grooves. These rivets are loose inside of there. Inside's just as bad. So now we have to get that inner piece out next. So I'm going to get a blowgun, clean out around there. There's a snap ring in there that holds that piece on. All right, got my blowgun. Clean out that snap ring in there. Zoom in a little better, you can see it. So now I'm going to use some 90 degree snap ring pliers to get in there, get on that clip, and come on, there we go, pop that out. Now hopefully I can just get this piece off easy. We'll see right now how that goes. To make a little more room, I got a bungee cord to go in here because this keeps flopping around. Make whatever you think is floppy. I'll hold that up a little better out of the way. Now back in business. All right, I'm gonna try to get behind this and wiggle it off. I'm hoping this one's easy. It's starting to move. I'm pulling with my fingers on this side. I'm just gently prying that side off the bolt. There we go. Sweet. So that gets that clutch off the center shaft, which is cast into the housing. I have done one before where that aluminum shaft has been so corroded it broke off and I had to replace the whole compressor. So hopefully that's not your case while doing this project. So now we need to get the magnet off. So your magnetic coil, here's the new one, it is pressed on around there. 
So same deal as that um, idler clutch part. We're gonna have to pry the old one off as well. So I'm going to Same deal, pry off the back, the bolt, both sides. It found the ground. Now, I'd be really surprised there's 302,000 miles on this truck and it looks like we still have the original Ford one. Yeah, baby, that's why. Now that's off, I'm gonna take a little 320 emery cloth and just clean up around that lightly. I don't wanna take too much to where that bearing can slip. I just wanna get any surface corrosion off of there. So that's clean for install, and I'm gonna also try lightly around where that clutch press on, but again, not much at all, because that is a press fit for that. So we need to make sure that stays on just right. So one thing to note was where your plug came out when you get ready to press your new one on. Um, there is an indent cut out on both sides. You wanna make sure you go back to the side where that plug was on and keep it original. So inside this epoxy plastic coating, you have your magnet coils in there and you have metal here, metal here and this ring here. Um, we're gonna get this on lined up and then I'm going to use a mallet to get it on the rest of the way. I need to be very careful not to hit in these parts. Switch to a brass drift and a hammer. And again, I'm staying only on that metal part. And I'm gonna rotate around. As I go. So obviously a press would be your favorite method. But to do that, you have to pull the compressor on the lines. And I'm not feeling that. So we are going in just fine. My plug still lined up. All right, I have to get a little more on this side. And that's okay. If you think I'm a bit of a hack, we're doing it this way. Is it crude? Yes. Will I have air conditioning when it's 95 and humid? Yes. So, I'm almost bottomed out to the back of the compressor. healer that solid smash so by doing that we we're able to press that piece back onto the collar um, so when you're done with that method this is brass it just took some paint off you won't definitely still want to check uh, that you didn't nick this to where 
when we put that rotor clutch in that it will not rub on that spot. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that piece now, set the camera back up. Um, there is one thing with the new snap ring, it is beveled. So you need to put the bevel in a certain direction. So this is your snap ring bevel, correct and incorrect. We want to do the correct side where that bevel goes into the groove on the angle. So with that, that, there's that new clutch, and then you get a couple of shims. I'll show you what to do there in a second. Um, Now, here's that snap ring, and if you look closely, you can see there's a bevel inside of that edge, so we need to be mindful of that, that that chamfer comes facing outward. So you might hear the rain, we just got a flash flood warning. Uh, golf course down the road will probably flood, but I don't like humidity, so I want my air conditioner. So, made sure I didn't hit that with my brass punch. We cleaned that up with the emery cloth. So now I'm ready to slide this back on. Get my mallet. Lightly tap that in. There's that snap ring. Spin it. I don't have anything touching or rubbing from that magnet we pressed on. All right. So now I'm ready to put that snap ring in. Here's my old clutch. There's the floor. The other old piece. There's the floor introduce themselves okay all right so again real quick show you that instruction bevel has to go in okay so i'm going to grab take a quick look again this side's flat this side's Got the bevel. You can kind of see it in the camera there and how it's flat on this side, but beveled on this. So I'm gonna get my pliers. I'm gonna grab it right there. Alright. And we'll get that snap ring in. Watch your face. No, not bad. I always like to get that started and then double check. With the flat head that I have it pushed back, there's a little clip noise we want. Alright. Again, double check that. Mallet, not a hammer. Make sure we're in. Okay, clip is in. So now we get to the part where we get to put our fancy new clutch in. Um, Ford uses shims inside of here. So those came with a little kit with the bolt and the screws. So what I'm gonna do first is Look at all those shims. All right, sorry, laying them out here. So I got those bolts, the new bolt. Which is 10 millimeter, 
good bolt. Kind of like this one better. Um, we will trust the process. All right, so for now, I'm just gonna put this on with no shim to see how, if there's any gap. Um, line your splines up, oh yeah. So I would have air conditioning 100% of the time. So I will add some of, you can see some of these are different size shims. I'm gonna add one thick one. Ideally what we're looking for when we put this on and I'll show you with some feeler gauges, um, 13 to 25 thousandths of an inch. That's a decent size and we're gonna check that from three different angles to make sure uh, we have that anywhere because these are flexible. Um, let's see. So you won't have the same tolerances all the way around. And you gotta be careful, that washer can fall sideways in there. Just like that. <laughs> okay, so let me pull that back on. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, grease. I'm gonna put the bolt in and do that washer this time. Thought I had steady hands. That is not the truth. So this is just the one thick washer right now. The bolt supporting it in there. Hmm. So we have a decent gap right now between the rotor and the clutch. So I'm gonna go get some feeler gauges and see where we at because I might have to uh, either use a more more thin uh, shim or add some, I don't know, without those feeler gauges. So let me go get those and we'll hand tighten this bolt right now so it somewhat compresses that washer. What I don't like about it is I don't have the 10 millimeter socket on my eight right now. Okay, always read your instructions. If you're using a used clutch, you're gonna set your air gap to 13 to 25 thousandths. Use, we have a new one. So recommended is, uh, do, 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 18 to 30 thousandths. So I'm gonna go with 26 thousandths uh, because of my next size down is 20. And I don't want it too close to the bottom, but I also don't want it too far to the top. Keep dropping my light, my fat bald spot. That's okay. So I'm gonna put this in. I've still got a little play. One, two, get down on the bottom. So the bottom's a little tight. The top is not. So I'm gonna go to a thinner shim and see where that puts me. Um, that's too far out from my liking. So I'm gonna take that screw out that's in there, remove the clutch and try a different shim. So I remove that first shim I put in. I'm gonna measure it. So we're at 48 thousandths. All right, some of these are too dang hard to even feel the difference. Um, now I'm gonna go, okay, this one's 15 thousandths less. That's at 32. All right, so we had 48 on that original one. Let me double check, cause my memory shot. 48, set that one aside. So I have 32 on that one, 15 on that one. on that one so let me see with math I've got 32 I had my original that was 48 
which was too much, too far for me. That's 15. And that's 19, five, almost 20. I'm gonna use the two smaller ones because that will give me right around 35. All right. 35-ish. And we'll put those in and check it there. Because that will close the air gap a little bit. But not as much as 32. I know maybe I'm being too picky. I should just do it. So I've got those two in there. I'm going to put the bolt in. So that way they don't fall off sideways. Turn it. Come on, come on. Oh. They're not the easiest little guys to work with. those in there <clears throat> climbing back up don't worry I don't have COVID can I say that on here All right. just years of break clean and dust in my throat all right we'll turn that in again by hand hand tight I'll get my feeler gauge okay I got that screw back in with the two shims I use my feeler gauges at 26 thousandths I felt around three spots so you see one two three where the rivets are on that and those are all about 120 degrees out it's just a little grippy and just a little grippy there maybe even tighter than there. That's okay, that's normal. And we'll do our bottom part. And same thing, it's grippy there. You see that? And when I spin this, it's not rubbing at idle. So that's what's spinning when the clutch isn't engaged with your belt. So now I'm gonna get a torque wrench and bring that to 155 inch pounds, which is just around 13 foot pounds. So that's got that new 10 millimeter bolt. Let me grab my torque wrench. If you have a digital torque wrench, that's great. You can set it right to what it's supposed to be. If you have a click style, you can go, you can convert it. So 13 foot pounds will get you there with a click style, if yours will go down to that. I don't know if 3 eighths will do that, but we're gonna put it on inch pounds there. Um, if you're asking why did he use two shims, my thinking is that serviceability in the future, if it wears out, you can take one of those shims out and readjust the clutch. If I put the thick one in and then I take that out, uh, I'm not keeping these in the glove box. And if I do, I'll probably lose them anyway, so. That way I can take one shim out down the road. So we're gonna tighten here, get to 15, 155 inch pounds. If you can hold that yourself, that's great. This is hard. Man, I'm only getting a 72, let me readjust. Maybe get a bar, some sort of bar in the rivets, something. We can do that. Great. There. Oh, wrong way. Typical me. All right. So we'll spin that around. Hold that rivet. check cool so that's torqued down now all right still not rubbing just that hose so now i can put my belt back on run and test hook my batteries back up i did forget to mention to disconnect those it's very important so you don't have any injuries and when you drop your breaker bar 
Alright, I'm going about that wrong. That's gonna go up there. So. It's gonna go down there. Okay. Spot by the tensioner, I thought so. Okay, trust in my instinct. Again. Pressure on that, make sure it's in all the ribs. Get that under the pulley. Alright, check down on the ribs again on the main crank. Alright, we're in. Now, swing my bottle back up make a little room clutch box he's got a clutch box of those on the chest Let's that out hose goes under there all right, again, you have the two long bolts down below, the short bolt up top. That hose goes underneath there. Start that short one. You got this. You're in the home stretch now, kiddo. All right. Get my extension, eight millimeter. Figure out how to get these bolts in here. Just drop that one in down below. Drop that one in. You're gonna go ahead, hook your batteries back up. Make sure you plug that uh, plug in, of course, for the AC. All right, I'm gonna move, hook your batteries back up. Move your tools. Let me clean up. So now the moment of truth. Did our work work? I'd say so.